Welcome! In this video, we'll cover how to tint a sculpture with oxides for a deep, rich, integral color. This sculpture is based on those lovely ancient fertility figures from history. She's intended to be an earth goddess and a spiritual icon, so I've chosen a vibrant jade color to represent her. The procedure we're using is based on the European art of scaliola, an imitation marble technique for indoor architectural finishes. Our jade lady is intended to go outside, so she's being built of tinted Paltaya Premium. Essentially, the technique is to make several small batches of differently colored clay and blend them by sculpting with them. This natural mixing will give a gorgeous organic surface patterning. To begin, we need to pre-make our pigmented batches and do so cleanly. Warning, oxides can get everywhere if you're not careful. Measure out one cup of Paltaya Premium, approximately 250 grams. Add to this three teaspoons of oxide, or 18 grams. This is very heavy loading of pigment at 8% because our sculpture is a small decorative piece. For larger or structural pieces, lower that percentage to 5% to get greater strength. Thoroughly mix these powders together in a Ziploc bag. This keeps our workspace tidy and clean. Always label your bag. This helps if you want to reproduce the same color in the future. We want to make a human figure. To begin, you figure out how tall you want it to be. You want to be about that tall, and that's about our ground. Okay? Then find ground. Go one, two, three, and four. That distance is one third of this distance. Okay? Draw a line till it touches, like so. Then give me an ankle, ankle, and a foot. Okay. Let's do a spine just to get it in place. Half this distance is about there. So that is the knee. Half the distance. The shoulder is about two thirds. There. Two thirds. Draw a line. So it's just on the outside. Okay. Draw a line. To there. Okay. Then this distance, halfway, it's about there, right? And you get your hand. Then from here, that, half of that distance is about right there. That's one half. the rib cage. So is the other elbow. Throw some hips in there. Okay. Then two thirds of that distance is the head. There. That is a proportional human figure. And this works for about 60 to 70 percent of humans. You can bend an armature based on this and get it accurate. Now here's a few cheats if you're doing a human figure. There's our rib cage right there, right? 
Well, the hips here are bent at a different angle. You can see, right? The human head doesn't come off the top. The human head comes forward off the chest wall. Now the legs, that point is called the great trochanter. It's where women are literally the widest. It's not the crest of the hip. It's actually, this is where it come, the bone comes to the surface. Okay? So if I want to do legs, they're going to be an S shape like that. They're going to be like that, and they're going to be like that. Just connect that. That are the volumes that you'll need. About. Another mention about the front of the leg from here down, and that is the front of the leg is like this, and there's another arch does that. The calf is there. So the outside of a leg looks like this. And this is the inside. A lot of people will draw a leg straight. It isn't. It curves dramatically on two axes. So this is the side view, and this is the front. It's necessary to build a foil core to sculpt on top of. Rip out many sheets of foil and pre-make balls and cigar shapes of various sizes. Always fold the shiny side in. Otherwise, the sparkliness of the shiny side makes it impossible to see your work. To assemble the figure with foil, begin hot gluing the basic shapes together. You'll notice the cigar shapes rapidly form these basic volumes. Since they start out already close to the needed shapes, it's a matter of puzzle piecing them together. Keep a lot of air in the foil. There'll be a fair amount of compressing it later on. The reason we go to this kind of trouble is, this process keeps the figure proportional. When sculpting, it's really easy for the lengths and distances to drift. Arms get too long, legs shorten, hands and ankles get into the wrong places. You'll notice how the shoulders are added to the ribcage. Then the arms are attached. It's important to keep track of the ribcage shape so it's not obscured. Keep the foil core thin at this point till we pinch in the location of the joints. Now we have a figure we can play with. Remember, you can't carve foil. You can only add to it or crush it. We need the ability to build outward from this skeleton. Once we have a proportional human frame, we can clad it in flesh. Continue to build up the shapes. Build the foil core up to her final size. When that's done, then crush the surface down to accommodate the thickness of the clay. Otherwise, it's nearly impossible to know if your composition is right. Remember, you are sculpting in the foil. The premium is the thin, ultra-strong surface coat with all the details in it. But the actual sculpting began the moment you got out the hot glue gun. All the composition, action, and vitality are done here. Take the time to enjoy this step. To apply the clay, mix up a batch of premium with water. It's easier to do this in a deep, high-sided bowl. Add water and mix till it's the consistency of cookie dough. 
The fibers must become fully blended in and this can take two minutes or more by hand. It's common to overdo the water and have it become too soft. The best and fastest way to solve this is to extract the excess water with a towel. Press it between the layers of fabric till it becomes clay-like. A successful dangle test lets you know when it's perfect. Today, we are making a thin preliminary scratch coat that will be left to cure overnight. Apply a thin coat, perhaps an eighth of an inch thick or three millimeters, to the surface. Work it thoroughly into the foil texture. This does three things. It strengthens the sculpture, gives a minimum thickness over the entire surface, and makes a rigid ground for the next day's sculpting, which can be pretty aggressive. The scratch coat is covered with texture and heavy keen, all the better as a grip to the next day's layer of clay. Wrap the sculpture in plastic for curing overnight. As you can see, we've also made a base, but we ended up not using it in the final work. Cut off the foil hands. We want this area to be solid premium for strength. It was good to keep the foil hands till now so the proportions could still be seen. The sculpted layer will need two colors. We're planning on blending from a dark base up to a lighter face. Only mix what you can apply in about an hour. In this case, it'll be up to her waist. Pre-make a small batch of the dark green black. Check proper consistency with a dangle test and set aside. Then quickly mix a second mid-tone green batch of premium the same way. Just like yesterday, place a thin eighth inch or three mil coating on the figure. You'll be building up from this layer, so just get the limbs covered first with a thin skin. Start with the dark green in the lowest areas. As you work upwards, roughly patch in the mid-tone green. Don't concern yourself with the pattern yet, that'll come. Clean up and make crisp the edges and corners with a tool. You can see the surface is getting a colored, dappled effect pretty quickly. With a steel tool, snip off a piece of each color and trowel it into your shapes. Treat the surface like you would be sculpting it normally. Build up your forms, shift them around. What's going to happen is you'll get the lovely color variations completely for free. The great news? It's not possible to do this wrong. You get what you get. With practice, you can manipulate it and get very specific color patterns. But when you're just starting out, what you're going to get is something beautiful. Take your time. You have so much time to get this done. Since we've made such small batches, we can concentrate on the area that's directly in front of us. The colors, they sort themselves out. The artist simply has to concentrate on getting their forms correct. Remember, you can sculpt upside down. The scratch coat is firm, so I can turn her upside down and check her symmetry. Weird symmetry becomes obvious when you do this trick. It's simple to correct at that point. With the lower half done, we'll move to the top half. This is made with a yellow-green and the same mid-tone green. Mix small batches of both. Now that the legs are firmer, it's time to sculpt the delicate hands in place. The hands are being kept simple to stay in character with the rest of the piece. Since the face is delicate, we've chosen to sift and take out half the fibers. This will sculpt more smoothly, but will have to depend on the undercoats for overall strength. The face will take time, so we'll only mix tiny walnut-sized batches of mid-tone and yellow-green. We'll still have a full hour, so there's plenty of time to go slowly and perfect this region. Begin not by sculpting a face, but by sculpting a skull instead. Clearly set out the jaw, the cheekbones, eye sockets, temples, and the dental arch. Do one side first, roughly. Then patch in the second side to match it. 
keep the shapes clear and almost faceted in appearance. If the face is a series of planes and angles, it allows you to see the symmetry, or lack of it, so much easier. I switch to a smaller tool to put in the eyes and begin tapping the facets down. This softens them into rounded shapes. The hair will have three colors in it. Fill up the area to a nice volume. I'll try to put in a more aggressive dark and light patterning for a punchier effect. Go over the surface with various tools to smooth it out. If the fibers become a nuisance, quickly erase them with a torch and re-wet the sculpture. The surface has firmed up in the past hour. Since I want a relatively smooth finish, I've chosen to sand her and concentrate on making her volumes look full and round. When you're satisfied, wet and wrap the sculpture to cure overnight. If you want to further sand the next day, this is still possible. The sculpture will have the consistency of balsa wood. Best to do it now if you want. In a few days, she'll have cured to granite. Now this is the point where you can begin to fall in love with your sculpture. Sanding is the gentle art of bringing your piece to its full potential. Do this lovingly. Don't concentrate on the high areas. There's a risk of flattening and potentially killing the life in your piece. Instead, a good sander concentrates on the edges and crevices, making them cleaner and sharper. Don't remove all the imperfections. They give the figure personality, character, and vibrancy. This is a one-of-a-kind original piece. It should look like it. When the sanding and exposed fibers make it hard to see your work, brush them off, burn with propane, and immediately re-wet. Do this as much or as little as you want. Sand, brush, burn, and re-wet till the sculpture is as wonderful as you want. To fully cure her, submerge her in water for a minimum of five days. Thirty days will make her as strong as possible, and that's what I'll do. In a month, we'll pull her out and bring her to a glittering finish. Our Jade Lady has cured for 30 days. We're using a solvent-based driveway sealant for the best protection. You can see how this brings out her color to a rich jewel tone. All our hard work pays off in this step. Take the time to admire your work. The subtle stone-like modeling is gorgeous. Thank you for listening. If you wish to see more of this type of instructional video, please subscribe and join us for more cool projects. Until then, happy sculpting.